Hey, it's Jamie Moore here. You're welcome to the Croke Park Hotel, sitting here on Saturday afternoon with Shamrock Rovers striker Graham Burke, named the 40-man Ireland squad by Martin O'Neill for three friendly games against Celtic, France and the USA in the next uh, 10 days or so. Graham, thanks for having the chat. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good, Jamie. You? Great, thanks, Graham. Thanks very much. Firstly, um, we heard during the week that you were in the squad, your first senior call-up. How did you hear um, and what did you feel like? Well, the first time I heard about it, me and Lukey was uh, having lunch and uh, Lukey went on to Twitter and uh, said to me through Twitter, you've been named in uh, the Ireland squad. And I was like, no, I haven't. Like, you know, and then he ended up showing me on it. And then I was like, bro, I haven't, I haven't heard anything. And then uh, Gaffer came in five minutes later and uh, he told me uh, he told me the news. And then I spoke to Martin, like, um, and then uh, Martin told me. And um, obviously I'm delighted and uh, absolutely over the moon. Of course, now everybody's on social media and Twitter, so you're sitting in the training ground having lunch with Lukey, who's Luke Byrne, one of your best mates, another Shamrock Rovers player, and he just flicks through his phone and says, Graymo, you're in the squad. Just as it was announced, like, just like, I think the post only went up, like, about two minutes, and uh, as soon as uh, Lukey found out and went on to it, it was just a picture saying, like, forced senior call-up and all, and that's how I found out, like... The first time and then obviously the gaffer coming in and speaking to me and telling me about it so you spoke to Stephen Bradley and then you spoke to Martin O'Neill was that on the phone yeah I was on the phone yeah what was that conversation like just uh, telling me that I was a uh, in the squad and uh, congratulated me and everything like that saying uh, when uh, we're gonna meet up obviously I still have a uh, the season here and important games for Rovers so um, we just have to sort the uh, sort of melt us in how we're gonna uh, balance it and that but I can't wait to uh, get started yeah of course Shamrock Rovers has some very important games coming up in the next week or so which we'll speak about in a few minutes of course Martin O'Neill was at the game against Cork on Monday of last week I was at the game myself Graham working and he'd literally just walked in I'd just seen him walk in and sit down when you turned after two and a half minutes and uh, fired one into the top corner with your weaker right foot so uh, he picked a good game to go to and luckily he didn't miss it yeah, that's uh, on that night. Obviously, I I went down and had a good game, and obviously to score that goal and to play in the game and come off the pitch feeling good about my performance, and obviously to have Martin in the stands watching. I think on that night, most things just uh, clicked. And with football, you need a bit of luck sometimes. And lucky enough that night, he was there watching, and for me, it's it's brilliant. I know we spoke after the match and we spoke on the League of Ireland podcast here maybe six weeks ago at this stage about the type of goals you score. I know on uh, Friday of this week you scored a header um, to pick up a one-all draw against Waterford and OG the previous week against Pats but uh, just against Peters about the type of goals you score because you don't tend to score tap-ins. That's yeah. I, I, sometimes I hang, hang around the box but sometimes I should uh, get in and try get on the end of the things but with the way I play is in trying to get in pockets and everything and when I get a bit of space and get the torn like the first thing in in my head is either can I slip somebody or can can I take a shot and lucky enough I had a bit of space in in the seasons where I uh, took the shot and uh, lucky enough uh, they went in like some of them go over some of them go wide like you know what I mean but at the end of the day if you don't, sh- don't shoot you're not going to score yeah, and I know Martin said in his press conference when he announced the squad that you weren't just in the squad for your goals and you felt you were comfortable with the ball and you could add a lot to, to his squad, but the goals you've scored in, in in the last kind of six or eight weeks since the season started has helped your profile overall for sure. I think obviously scoring goals from outside the box, they always seem better than when you tap them in from two yards or something, you know, just people talk about it and say, oh, that was a great goal and obviously like, Scoring good goals probably benefits you, but where do you score from? 15 yards or two two yards, they all have the same meaning to them. They just one looks better. Yeah, of course, one looks better indeed, and you've scored lots of those this season. How much practice goes into that? Like We hear all the time different footballers at the top level, literally with a bag of footballs on the training pitch after training with one of the younger goalkeepers literally whacking shots from all distances. Is that something you've done across your career? Because clearly being able to shoot from distance is not a fluke. I know at times they don't go in, but it does take practice. Yeah, I think like I don't really like smack them from all sorts of uh, distances in their uh, training. It's normally like just from eighteen yards out, like and then getting another one from six yards. You know what I mean? Just is in drills where you take one shot from here, you get another shot from there, and then you get one like is in 
cross and or whatever but i just try like is in get the technique as as best as best uh, as i can and i think when i when i hit them it's just about putting laces through them sometimes i try and bend them but it's just about getting that clean contact and then i think we when you get good clean contact the ball can move you've seen like the waterfall goal the other night when Houlihan hits it and it just goes boom and ends up like in nearly the other side of the goal but the balls do move because they're quite light so it's something that I try to do is just get a clean contact there and then the ball will move Do you fancy hitting some of those in now for Ireland in these friendly games if you can? Oh, it's, it's crazy to think like when I sit down like and I think to myself like what has just came from came from the season to now has been getting a, a call up and I can't believe it like it's it's like I still like in shock when people come up to me and congratulate me and all I have to think like and say yeah hang on like I actually in the Ireland squad but all I do is I'm, I'm feeling confident now with how the season has gone and to try and bring that in there and just um, try and compose myself and go in there and try to show what I can do. Yeah and I know it's something that you said to me when we spoke you know previously about it that you love playing football and you don't really think too much about where you're playing or what's going on. But if you do get the chance to make your Ireland debut, we spoke to Matt Doherty recently, he made his in Turkey, I think at the age of 24 or 25, quite late, you'd be the same. Um, will you be having a little moment or a thought or a think or are you thinking about that now, the actual opportunity when you do finally step on the pitch, if you do for Ireland? Yeah, if I was to get a bit of game time, I think obviously there'd be nerves there. Of course it's going to be nerves there. But I think like there'd be more good nerves than bad nerves you know I think when you go into a game with nerves it's it's a good thing you know what I mean like you can't like sometimes you go in nervous and you come out of a game like after having a great game and you're just like why why did I feel so nervous like but football at the end of the day is a game and you just go out and on the day you don't know what's going to happen but you can just go out and the only thing that you can do is say I'm going to work hard and um, try and let then your game speak for yourself but I'll go there with confidence and try to compose myself and try just do what I've been doing for Rovers and try to let me football do, do the talking. Yeah, speaking of letting your football do the talking, Graham, we're speaking to Graham Burke here. It's Jamie Moore in the Croke Park Hotel. Graham's has been called up to the Ireland squad for the first time, meeting up hopefully next week to play games against Celtic and Scott Brown's testimonial, and then against France and the USA TV Stadium, which will be John O'Shea's last game. He's going to captain the team uh, in that one as well. Uh, Graham. We know that Wes Hoolan has just retired from international football recently enough. Another former Belvedere player, another former inner city lad. There isn't too many players like your type in the Ireland squad. Number 10s, you know, wide players, strikers who are comfortable with the ball and, and want to get on the ball. So there is definitely a gap in the squad for someone like you. Do you feel that is the case? And do you feel if you do get the chance to perform and, and impress that you have, a, you have a chance to do well? That's what I'd like to think that the way I play football will be nearly the same as the way Wes plays the football. It's and Troy get on it, Troy try to start things, try to get the ball moving, try to be calm on the ball, try to create things. And obviously, like for me this year, I'm trying to add more goals to my game. And I think like is in having Wes there to look at and to see like how, how he performs, how he gets things started. I think like hopefully like not just for me, but I think is in teams need a, a player probably that can do them kind of things. Yeah, is he someone when you were growing up you would have looked up to? I know when you would have started at Belvedere as a six-year-old, he would have probably still just about been at the club or maybe he would have just left. He's had a fantastic career, obviously still hopeful to continue in club football, but is he someone you're quite similar from town, played for Belvo, you know, had some time in the League of Ireland, he's in the UK, you've been in the UK, you're now back here, so you're, apart from in style, your stories are similar enough as well. Yeah, so I used to watch uh, Wes, I used to go down to talk and watch Wes and uh like all friends and that used to go down like of a Friday night and watch him down there and then obviously the career he's had since he went to England has, has been unbelievable. I seen uh, the send off he got when he retired and obviously like the career he had with with Ireland and he was a fabulous player. Yeah, it's something as well that you learned playing in Dublin, playing on the streets. Just talk to us a little about that for those who, who wouldn't have heard the podcast a couple of months ago, your background in, in being a street footballer and having a football at your foot since you were able to walk, really, playing on the streets, playing in the Larkin College on the Astro and basically kicking a football anytime you could. Yeah, of course. Like you see, the NSE, like you have not really so much now, but when I was growing up, it used to be 
five sides. Everything was five sides, as in heads and volleys. You know, all them games you can play on the street. That's the way when I was growing up, football was being played. I used to go down to the Belvoir Football Club down on um, just off uh, Buckingham Street. And uh, I used to go down there with all friends and all. And we used to play uh, five sides in there. And then we used to go into five side tournaments and all. And I think that's the way of I, I play is being composed on the ball and trying to just keep the ball and keep it ticking over and, and trying to create things. I think like is in five sides that helps is in having all their match books. And one other attribute you have, Graham, apart from ability on the ball, is you're a tough player, you like to tackle, you've no problem putting your foot in. I know you got some stupid red cards last year, but not so much talking about that, just the fact that being a street footballer taught you to look after yourself. And if you go in the League of Ireland, clearly, but if you go and play for Ireland, there will be times where you're going to get smashed and people are going to try and kick you. And to be able to physically look after yourself, even though you're not a massive, big, muscly fella, you're brave, you're strong, and you do... When there's a tackle needed to be made, you're happy to put your foot in and and and, and make that tackle. Yeah, I like to I like to play on the edge. You know what I mean. I, I go into games like trying to get the juices flowing, as in to say like just get yourself into the game, as in get your first touch, get your first pass completed. If it's gonna be a tackle, win the tackle. And um, I like obviously last year I went into some stupid stupid tackles, but I think this year I'm trying to find the balance of trying to keep the head and trying to not is in going to a tackle with too much force or anything like that even trying to sometimes just stand people up instead of like making that tackle because I think like now is in going into the games if I go into a rash tackle like that with the reputation of last year if I've been sent off I think like that wouldn't be so good because I think referees are just to say like oh he plays on the edge, he likes a tackle, you know, he can be, or whatever, like, put on a bad tackle. So I kind of have to watch that, and I think, obviously, is in talking to the gaffer and all, is in trying to mature, because they were childish decisions that I made last year, is in doing that. I missed seven games through suspension, which is a lot of games, so this year I think I only have one yellow card, so I think, like, is in that area of me game, I've um, done it better. What do you expect from your first experience with Ireland in training or in a game? You've been in the UK with Aston Villa's first team, for example, clearly playing at the top level here in the League of Ireland, played for Ireland up to under-21s, 19s, 17s. What do you expect from the first team when you go in for the first time to train? What will you be trying to do and, and stuff like that? I expect it to be uh, like brilliant, you know, going in there like and seeing all these players that like you watch on the telly and to go in there and then like train with them and all. Like It's going to be... Uh, an unbelievable experience for myself is in to go in there and play with these types of players and see how how they train and see how they apply themselves to um, matches and everything like that and it's an experience that I can't wait to uh, go there and uh, see. Yeah, I heard a piece on, on one of the radio stations during the week and the presenters were suggesting that your call-up was a token gesture by Martin O'Neill. The presenter asked the contributor, is Graham good enough to be in the Ireland squad? The answer was no which I think is a very, very silly uh, comment to make. But anyway, it was made. What do you make when you hear things like that? And we've seen over the years, you know, Sean Maguire and Daryl Horgan both currently in the squad. Sean, fantastic, doing well in the UK, as is Daryl. Loads of other players, the same. In my opinion, you're in the squad because you're good enough to be in the squad and you've done it here and Martin O'Neill has seen that. But not everybody would agree with that, which must be a little bit frustrating, or do you care? I don't, I don't really care. As a football player, everybody's going to have an opinion on you. You know what I mean? Uh, everybody like you know it's nothing you can do the only thing you can do is is focus on football and believe in yourself that's the main thing like you know so if somebody doesn't think that I'm good enough to be in the squad that's that's their opinion at the end of the day it's it's down to Martin and what what he thinks that's all I the opinion that I will take out of it that I care about is what he thinks but other than other people's opinions I don't really pay attention to that yeah of course when you do go in you are going to have to prove to everybody that you do deserve to be in the squad but I know you've got confidence in, in doing that when you were a kid and still now what English football team do you support Liverpool okay so uh, you would have watched a lot of games over the years in Liverpool um, and a lot of the, the players who played in the, in the Premier League you were at Aston Villa of course when you were a kid uh, you know over the last couple of years the level of training in the UK in comparison to Ireland a Championship Premier League I, I would assume the fact you've been at Villa at that level will help your transition in, into the into this yeah obviously being there and 
his trains with the likes of Villa and the first team and everything like that, I kind of probably know what to expect as in the standard and how they apply themselves and how, how they go about uh, their training and everything. So I kind of have experience in how that was and I, I wouldn't find this any different. So hopefully I like, I'm prepared enough for that kind of way and I look forward to it and um, hopefully go on and have confidence and um, express myself and go and just play. Yeah, I know there's three important games for Ireland coming up. Uh, the first game is on Sunday of next week, just say next week, uh, against Celtic and Celtic Park. Scott Brown's testimonial. Then on May the 28th, it's a game against France, followed by uh, June the 2nd, a game against USA. Graham, it comes in a busy time for Shamrock Rovers. The day before the Ireland Celtic game, Sligo, you guys are in Sligo. You then are due to play St. Pat's on the Tuesday. Bowls in the Dublin Derby on the Friday. Two great games sent on Dock on the 1st of June, all in a period when the Ireland games are on. I know Stephen Bradley said he plans to speak to Martin O'Neill about that. Do you know yet when you're going to be in the Ireland squad and how long you'll be with them for? And how do you hope that's worked out? Because I know you're loyal to Shamrock Rovers, but at the same time, the chance to spend two weeks with Ireland is something that you probably don't want to turn down. Yeah, of course. I think, um, obviously, the Gaffa and uh, Martin are going to uh, speak on that and I'll find out um, what's going to happen regarding the situation. But obviously, it's a busy schedule for us and the games that you just had to mention are not important for us because... We need to start there uh, winning games. I think like the last couple of games we've only picked up the result against Cork and obviously a tough game against Waterford last night where we picked up a point but we need to be uh, putting more points on the board. Like when we look at the table like is in like nearly a month and a half ago we were challenging to go top and now we've just fizzled down the league so we need to start climbing up that league again. Yeah, if we, if we can stick on the team of Rovers in the League of Ireland for now, can you put your finger on what the slump in form has been down to? I think it's one win in, in nine games at this stage. The Cork win was an unbelievable win at 3-0. You know, played really well. Your goal, of course, happened in that game. But results in the last while haven't been good. You have slipped down the table. And even now, the battle for Europe looks on, apart from the battle for the title for you guys. And I know there's still over half the season to go. But can you put your finger on why things in the last nine, ten games haven't been what they were before? just been like I think it's a bit inconsistent you know we've gone out and put in great performances and, and got wins and then the next week we go out and we don't put on the performance that we did the week before and I think like obviously nobody has really been cutting us open as in to score goals against us I think we're giving away some like cheap cheap goals and that if we can just um stop that you know what I mean I think that will help us and is in to try and maybe score more goals and like when we get that one nil lead sometimes we slip and we end up losing the game is in order to be ruthless and uh, go on and um, end up getting two or three I think that will help us but I think just consistency is in performing week out and week week out and week in as in and trying to not concede them stupid goals yeah Graham last two questions just on your inclusion in the Ireland squad overall and uh, you know everybody's going mad that it's a League of Ireland player in and it's 1 in 40 and, and so on and we've had previous players before you've come back from the UK and, and you've been you know playing really well here in the league just speak to me a little bit about kind of the League of Ireland for you you've clearly played very well but you, you've had to come into a, a really good club in Rovers and be able to do it and be able now to get back in the Ireland squad and I know your ultimate ambition maybe is to go back to England eventually but just on the league here that Martin has picked a player not on a token in my opinion on that you have done well enough in games in the League of Ireland to merit being in a squad albeit it's friendly games and the UEFA Nations League it's not we're not near a qualification campaign but he still picks you for the squad from the League of Ireland Yeah I think like it's not just for myself but for every player in the league if you just look and go and perform and go and do the best that you can obviously like if you look at the Dundalk boys and Shawnee is in going to England it's a great like platform if you want to go and prove yourself in the league and go on to put in great performances and you know what I mean that there's people there watching and you can get to places where you want want to be and I think like for myself coming back to Shamrock Rovers I've, I've loved every minute of it the gaffer has given me um, an opportunity to go and uh, express myself and to go and show what he can do and obviously like with this call up on the back of it you know what I mean I'll put 
that down to the gaffer having the belief in me and everything to give me that chance and just to show what I can actually do. And for you, I know it wasn't hard to take that chance, but you did come home from England a little disappointed that it hadn't worked out for, you know, reasons. I'm sure you probably could have stayed in England had you wanted, but you decided to come back to come back to Dublin to your girlfriend and your family and, and to sign for Rovers. How have you managed to bring your performances to the level where you got into the Ireland squad when you've, when you've come from a, a level where, again, for reason A, B or C, it didn't work as well as you maybe would have liked? I think it's just been being happy, you know, coming home and... <clears throat> Being with the family, having the girlfriend, having friends, having everybody around you that you can just go and live normal life with the people that you love and everything like that is in it just makes you feel like from the first day, the first moment I, I came home, I just felt that. And you know what I mean? Going into Rovers and I think it's in me being happy and everything, it just shows in your football. And then obviously being up at Rovers and what's going on and see the direction of where the club wants to wants to go I wanted to be a part of that and I wanted to uh, go out and express myself and show what I can actually do and uh, I think like obviously the gaffer having the belief in me and telling me that he's going to play me in a position where he thinks I'm best to where instead of putting me on a wing or anything like that that has helped me as in I'm playing in the actual position that I'd like to play and I think that is shown in, in performances. The importance of being happy and having family near you off the pitch can't be underestimated. People who've either been in England or still in England or have come home have always said it. Mm. I don't want to talk too much about you know life in England because you're not there now currently but life back in Dublin for you just being around family and being able to finish training jump in the car for 20 minutes from Rollstone be back in town, back at home, back around your, your nannies and your granddads and, you know, your parents and, you know, your missus and all is a really nice thing that you didn't have for the previous, probably, what, five years, six years more? Yeah, well, it was me, me and the girlfriend away living and um, obviously I had family every every month coming over, you know, but obviously when you come home from training and you're going home, there's the two years you're trying to do things, you know what I mean? It's quite... It's quite boring at times, you know, so it's in order to come home and have the freedom to do whatever, as in just to even go down to your mates and have a cup of tea, play the PlayStation, have a chit-chat, you know what I mean, and to do anything, like, I think that that helps you, you know what I mean, it's just feel more happy that you can just do these things where it's kind of limited, limitless in uh, England to do. Graham Burke, are you as good at football on the PlayStation as you are in real life? No, no, not at all, no. I just want to finish finally on the family. You mentioned it a few times. How have they reacted to the call-up? And I'm, I'm sure they're very proud of you, of course, but for them to see their Graymo to be in the Ireland squad is quite nice. Oh, yeah. Like, the whole family are just proud, you know, excited. They can't believe it. And they're just, like, talking to everybody, like, you know, and they're just happy congratulating me and saying just go and express yourself and show them what you can do. It's a it's a great opportunity for you, but for me too, it's a proud moment and for them it's a proud moment and we'll share this moment together. You will indeed. Now, Graham Burke, I want you to make me a promise, right? Over the three Ireland games, you've got to score a goal from 30 yards because that's what you're known for. Is that Are you in? I'll try to, Jay, yeah. Graham Burke, thanks a million. The best of luck in the Ireland squad and for always the rest of the season. We'll speak to you soon. Thanks a million. Cheers. Thanks very much, Jay.